Financial fraud is a big problem for many companies and in this video you will see on how to use deep learning to predict fraudulent financial transactions. Welcome to the channel Data Science Demonstrated where you learn data science through business friendly and no code examples and visuals. You can also try out all the analytics which are shown in this video on my website experiencedatascience.com. The link is in the description below. So friends, let us get started, but do not forget to subscribe to the channel, like and comment on the video. Deep learning architecture is inspired by how the brain works. It has got different layers of neurons. We'll be taking financial transactions and then we will pass them through different deep learning layers. And the final layer will give us a prediction if the financial transaction is fraud or not a fraud. Deep learning architectures are sophisticated and has got many parameters. The number of parameters are based on number of layers and number of neurons. And the number of parameters can exponentially grow for sophisticated architectures. So you may ask, is this complexity really needed? Now, one of the biggest challenges in fraud detection is the problem of class imbalance, which means the data which is used to train the machine learning model has got very few cases of fraud. So fraud detection is a special kind of problem which justifies to have a sophisticated approach like deep learning architecture. In this example, I'll be taking data from the banking transaction systems. The data looks something like this. It has got a type of financial transactions, the amount as well as the origin and the destination information such as the old balance and the new balance. There is also a flag which indicates if the transaction was fraudulent or no. The data itself will be split into two, the training data and the test data. And the deep learning model will be developed on the trained data set and then we will use it to validate it on the test data. And then this model can be used to predict fraud on any unseen data. Let us now see how the deep learning architecture for this problem looks like. We have got an input neurons which correspond to the transaction data. Each of these neuron corresponds to a column in the input data such as the type of transaction, the amount, the balance information at the origin and destination. We also have one intermediate layer and then we have one final layer which has got two neurons, one which predicts non-fraud and the other which predicts fraud. The lines are signals which are passed between the different layers. A green line indicates a positive signal and a red line indicates a negative signal. We see over here that a neuron 1 underscore 0 is passing a positive signal to the neuron fraud. Now this means that this neuron has deep learned what a fraud transaction looks like. Now this is pretty exciting and let us peek inside this neuron. You see a radar chart for different fields in the data. A blue line indicates a high value and a red line indicates a low value. The radar chart here indicates a high but almost similar old and new balance at the origin. However, a very big difference between old and new balances at the destination. Now let me show you what this means using an animation. This situation is when the origin account has got a very high value. It transfers some amount to a destination account and for the origin account both the old and new balance are relatively high. However, for the destination account the balance increases by almost four times and such a transaction could represent a potential fraudulent transaction. Now let us see the accuracy of the deep learning model using the confusion metrics. We see an accuracy of 99%. In total, there are about 95,000 transactions out of which there are 62 fraudulent transactions, which is extremely less compared to the total transactions. 
However, our deep learning model is doing good and is able to identify 52 transactions correctly as fraudulent transactions. And this is also called true positive. There is also one false positive, which means that it is not a fraudulent transaction, but it is incorrectly flagged as fraud. So the precision of our model is true positive divided by the total of true positive and false positive, which is 98%. Also, there are 10 false negatives, which means that these are the fraudulent transactions, but our model is not able to catch them. So the measure recall is the true positive divided by the total of true positive and false negative, which is 83%. So hopefully you have enjoyed this video. You can also try out all the analytics which are shown in this video on my website experiencedatascience.com. On this website, you can go to the experience fraud prediction using deep learning. You can then click on the data story to understand the context. And then you can get hands on and try it out by yourself. You'll be able to experience all the visuals and analytics which are shown in this video without any need to code. Thank you for watching.